Hi folks and welcome to another video about so-called static pressure fans. In this fifth part of the series I'm going to look at another lineup of 10 fans but this time I'm going to do things just a little bit differently. I'm going to show you all the performance results, the static pressure tests at both 1600 and 1100 rpm and also the thermal performance at those speeds, but I'm only going to tell you the identity of nine of the fans and the last fan I won't reveal until the very end. Now, I'm holding the T30 here, which I'm really excited to test because there's a lot of hype about this fan supposedly being the best fan to get. Now, as I said about this fan when I was talking about DC motors, there is absolutely nothing wrong with this fan from a construction point of view. It's a really, really nice fan. It's high quality. It's got a very high level of fit and finish. And it's a good fan to all intents and purposes. But I don't know what the performance is going to be like either when it comes to static pressure or thermal performance. Now there's one other fan that I want to draw attention to here before we start the tests. And you may remember this fan from the unboxing video. This is the EK Loop fan, which I bought only because it was advertised as a high static pressure fan. Now, if we have a look round the other side of this fan, I'm gonna zoom in on this, you'll see there it says full pressure technology 120 and I want to assure you guys that that is a load of absolute garbage it doesn't mean anything at all it's just some words from the English language thrown into a really attractive crescent shape in such a way that it matches the circular form of the label how wonderful is that anyway without further ado Let's have a look at the tests and see how these new fans get on. So here's the T30, 1600 RPM, and like the other fans of a similar design, it is still quite low down when it comes to static pressure performance. I've put it down at 16.5 pascals, but it is there looking a bit closer to 17 pascals. So I will make that change. But yeah, this is not a high static pressure performance fan. Here's the P28 at 1600 RPM. And it's very much looking like everything's kind of in the same ballpark at the moment. We're all much of a muchness, give or take one or two pascals in either direction. Here's the tough fan on the chamber and you might notice I had to make a little shroud not just for this fan but for a couple of the others that use this ring frame design. It's just not the same shape of aperture as a standard fan frame so I have to cover all these gaps to make sure it's a good seal. And the pressure that we get is 13 and a half to 14 pascals from the tough fan. Here is the Noctua P12, and despite its speed of approximately 1700 RPM, when I put it on this deadheaded chamber, it drops to below 1500 RPM, so I've had to overvolt it to get it up to the 1600 RPM target, and at that speed, we are getting almost 24 pascals, so this is a good bit more powerful than any of the other fans tested so far. So, looking at the 1600 RPM graph, we can see that the mystery fan is streets ahead of the others. More on that later. The P12 performs well here, similar to the leaders from the previous lineup. But the EK Loop fan appears very much to be all talk, no action in the pressure game. What a surprise. The 1100 RPM graph shows the same trend with a significant hit to pressure performance and tighter grouping 
except for the mystery fan, which maintains its substantial lead. Let's move on to the thermal tests. As before, I'm using the same test system with the same methodology, keeping a close eye on the intake temperature and periodically measuring fan speed during each test run. Each fan completes two tests, one at 1600 RPM and another at 1100 RPM, and the maximum delta temperature is recorded. So let's look at the 1600 RPM results first. Here we finally see conclusive evidence of the T30's superiority, which puts it comfortably ahead of every other fan in the test. While the front runners have all put in a good performance, the EK loop fan is a little behind, but the three fans at the bottom find themselves among the worst of all the fans tested. The 1100 RPM results once again reveal a change in rankings, but the T30 retains its lead, followed closely by the thermal right and the P28. EK's loop fan is actually not too bad here, but the others have really fallen quite far behind, and in the case of the Pure Wings too, failed the test altogether. I have to say I'm very surprised and disappointed by the performance of the Tough Fan 12. Okay, so now that you have the results, there's only one thing left to do, and that's to reveal the identity of the mystery fan that has beat the pants off every other fan in the tests. And that fan is none other than the Nidec G1238. Now, you might ask, why on earth would you put this fan in a test with PC fans? And there is a very good reason for my having done this. Let me explain. I was watching a video, uh, I think it was Jay's Two Cents, and also I've watched other videos recently with Steve from Gamers Nexus and also Linus. All of them like to talk about optimised fans. And as I've mentioned in a previous video, gaming PC fans are not optimised for performance. This fan is a performance optimised fan. And the only way that I can demonstrate that succinctly is to pit it against all the other fans operating at exactly the same speed. And you'll see what happens. This fan just poops all over every other fan, especially in the low speed tests and of course in the maximum static pressure tests as well. Now what we can take away from that is not that gaming PC fans are all rubbish, that's not at all what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that gaming PC fans are not performance optimised, they are generally speaking noise or sound optimised. They are made in such a way that they are as quiet as they possibly can be. And unfortunately for some, that often means that their performance is just really poor. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. I'll be back with more soon.